In this module, we will discuss exterior and service lights, flight deck lighting, and passenger signs. Controls for the landing, runway turnoff, and taxi lights are located on the overhead panel. Two fixed landing lights are installed in the leading edge of each wing. These lights are controlled with the outboard and inboard light switches. With the landing gear lever in the off or up position and the switches on, the wing landing lights illuminate at reduced intensity. With the landing gear lever in the down position and the switches on, landing lights illuminate at maximum intensity. The left and right runway turnoff light switches control the runway turnoff lights. Two runway turnoff lights are mounted on the nose gear structure left and right of the airplane center line. The runway turnoff lights illuminate only when the air ground sensing system is in the ground mode and the appropriate switch is selected to on. The taxi light switch on the overhead panel controls the taxi lights. Two taxi lights are located on the nose landing gear and illuminate only when the air ground sensing system is in the ground mode and the taxi light switch is selected to on. Controls for the beacon, navigation, strobe, wing and logo lights are located on the overhead panel. The beacon light switch controls the red anti-collision lights which are mounted on the fuselage, one on the top and one on the bottom. The switch has three positions, off, lower and both. Placing the switch in the lower position helps prevent vertigo and visible moisture. The navigation light switch controls two green lights in the right wing leading edge, two red lights in the left wing leading edge, and two white lights in the tail cone. The strobe light switch controls three white anti-collision strobe lights. One strobe is installed on each wing leading edge at the base of the winglet and one in the tail cone. The wing illumination switch controls flush mounted lights on each side of the fuselage. These lights illuminate the wings and engine nacelles. The logo light switch controls two spotlights installed on the horizontal stabilizers which illuminate the vertical stabilizer. Service lights are located at various work areas such as the wheel well and cargo compartments. Controls for these lights are located at the individual service areas. This example shows the nose wheel well lights. Question. Answer C is correct. Now let's look at flight deck lighting. Controls for the flight deck lights are located on the overhead panel and the left and right sides of the glare shield. The aisle stand panel and floodlight rotary switches are located on the overhead panel. The outer portion of the aisle stand panel flood control varies the brightness of the aisle stand panel lights. The inner portion of the aisle stand panel flood control varies floodlight brightness.
Controls for storm, circuit breaker, glare shield, and dome lights are located on the overhead panel. The dome light's rotary switch control regulates three dome lights and varies their intensity. The circuit breaker and overhead panel rotary control regulates lighting for the circuit breaker panels and overhead panel indicator lights. The outer portion of the glare shield panel flood rotary control switch regulates glare shield integral lighting and the standby magnetic compass light. The inner portion of the rotary switch controls the glare shield floodlights and varies the light intensity on the glare shield. The storm switch is a light override switch. When on, dome lights illuminate at maximum intensity and flight decks illuminate to full intensity, overriding normal lighting controls. The indicator light switch is located on the overhead panel. It controls the intensity of flight deck indicator lights and provides a test function. The bright position selects maximum brightness for daytime operation, and dim selects intermediate brightness for night. The indicator light switch includes a test feature. When held in the test position, all the indicator lights illuminate. Additional light controls are located on the glare shield. The outer portion of the captain's panel control regulates the variable intensity of the light in the captain's panel and the left side of the center panel. The inner portion of the captain's panel light control regulates the variable intensity of the floodlights over the captain's panel and the center panel. These lights are positioned under the glare shield to direct lighting onto the captain's and first officer's panels. The outer portion of the first officer's panel light control regulates the variable intensity of the light in the first officer's main panel and the right side of the center panel. Inner portion of the first officer's panel light control regulates the variable intensity of the floodlights over the first officer's panel. The pull-on, push-off map light controls regulate map lights located above the windshield. Light sensors located on the lower right corner of each CRT and a remote light sensor located above the glare shield provide automatic control of brightness of each CRT as ambient light conditions change. Utility lights are located outboard of the captain's and first officer's seat on the sidewall. The utility light can be turned on by using the brightness control. The momentary on switch illuminates the light momentarily. Brightness can be regulated by rotating the brightness control. Standby electrical power is provided for the dome lights, floodlights, standby magnetic compass light, and the aisle stand floodlight. Also, all standby instruments, clocks, upper CRT, and ICAST display select panel are illuminated on standby power. Control for the flight deck access lights is located on the overhead maintenance panel. Pushing the flight deck access light switch illuminates an exit or entry path to or from the flight deck on a dark airplane. Two additional light switches control the same lights, one at the crew entrance door and one at the EE center lower hatch. The flight deck access lights are powered by the ground handling bus until normal AC power is established. Now let's look at passenger signs. Controls for the passenger no smoking and fasten seatbelt signs are located on the aisle stand. 
When the selectors are positioned off or on, the no smoking and seat belt signs are operated manually. When the selectors are in auto, the signs are operated automatically. With the no smoking sign selector in auto, the no smoking signs automatically illuminate when the landing gear lever is selected down or when the cabin altitude exceeds 10,000 feet. With the fasten seatbelt sign selector in auto, the fasten seatbelt signs automatically illuminate when flaps are selected down or when the landing gear lever is selected down or if airplane altitude is below 10,300 feet. With the fasten seatbelt sign selector in auto, the fasten seatbelt signs automatically extinguish during climb out when the flaps and gear are selected up and airplane altitude is above 10,300 feet. The no smoking and fasten seat belt signs illuminate automatically when cabin altitude exceeds 10,000 feet. This occurs regardless of selector position. The nose cargo door control panel is located on the forward left side of the main cargo deck. Light controls are also on this panel. Nose cargo door and latch enunciator panels are located directly below the nose cargo door control panel. A latch actuator test panel is located on the forward right side of the main cargo deck. Question. Answer C is correct. Question. Answer A is correct. Question. Answer A is correct.